Hello everyone. In this particular video, we're going to look at the mechanism of an imine hydrolysis. We've previously seen that imines, these are synthesized by the reaction of a carbonyl compound with an amine under acidic conditions, mildly acidic conditions. Now, the synthesis of an imine is a reversible process. It's a reversible reaction which means once an imine is synthesized, it can also be hydrolyzed back to the carbonyl compound. So this short video is going to focus on the, synth on the mechanism of this hydrolysis. How does this hydrolysis happen? Now, if you've been closely following the videos, you're going to, you're going to notice that there is a lot of analogy to the acetyl hydrolysis that we've already seen in a previous video. So uh, we're going to use aqueous acid, uh, hydronium ions to represent aqueous acids because we're doing the uh, hydrolysis here. And uh, if you look at the reaction itself, pretty much what happens is the double bond NR, that fragment is replaced by a double bond O. So you get your carbonyl compound back and the RN part becomes the amine. Now, we're using an imine here. If this were an enamine, you would get the key to the carbonyl compound plus the secondary amine back under those conditions. So let's look at this mechanism. And as, as with a lot of other examples, since, uh, since this is the reaction with an acid, one of the first steps is usually a protonation event. And in this particular case, the nitrogen here uses its lone pair to uh, get protonated. So the, the, the imine gets protonated at the nitrogen atom. And electrons from here, uh, from that bond, are pushed back to the oxygen atom so that we get water molecule. Again, this is an acid-base reaction, so this would be reversible. And by the end of it, we will get a protonated imine, which would put a formal charge on that nitrogen atom along with water. Now, again, as I've been trying to point out here with some of these mechanisms, it's always a good idea to keep an eye on your uh, target. You know, what products are you getting? So if you look at it, that nitrogen here in the imine has to get two hydrogens. We've added one hydrogen at this point. That means we need to add more hydrogens. And the carbon here needs to get the oxygen. That oxygen most likely comes from this water molecule, okay? So what we can do is, in a mechanistic sense, what we can do, the next step is, now that we have this protonated imine, we can have a water molecule come and attack the, car the carbon here, and simultaneously, the double bond would open up. Electrons get pushed to that nitrogen so that we get to our next intermediate where we have the NH with an R. The nitrogen now has a lone pair on it. The formal charge is gone, so there's a formal charge, uh, lone pair on the nitrogen, and then we have the water molecule connected to that carbon. Water molecule attack that carbon. Subsequently, this is happening under aqueous conditions. So there's more water. There is water around. So a molecule of water can deprotonate that intermediate give us NH and R, one lone pair on the nitrogen now. And this oxygen would have two lone pairs and no formal charge. Plus, we would make hydronium ion again. Okay, so now if you compare with our product, We've made a single bond to an oxygen. So now we have an oxygen connected to that carbon and the, N, the nitrogen has one hydrogen. Now, what we want is we want a double bond between that carbon and the oxygen. We want an NH2. So once you're at this intermediate here, draw some comparison to the hemiacetal. This intermediate is 
the carbonyl amine that we had seen prior. Okay, uh, that is what this intermediate is. And at this point, under acidic conditions, both the nitrogen or the oxygen can get protonated. If the oxygen gets protonated, then we are on our way back. That's why we have the reversible arrow here. But when the nitrogen gets protonated here, we are moving forward. So we can get the uh, nitrogen protonated here. So we'll have hydroxyl group now, oxygen with two lone pairs, and this nitrogen has uh, two hydrogens on it. So there is one hydrogen, a second hydrogen, and then the R group. And the nitrogen would have a formal charge on it. And now if you look at it, we are getting really close to what our end products are. We have the RNH2, the amine is formed. Uh, it is connected to that carbon, but this would also make it a good leaving group at this point. And we need to make that double bond between the oxygen and the carbon. So at this point, the lone pair and the oxygen can come down and it can assist the loss of that nitrogen. So this bond goes to the nitrogen. Nitrogen is going to get its lone pair that way. Again, a reversible reaction. What we'll get is double bond OH, one lone pair, formal charge, plus we get RNH2. So we get the amine out. Now, since we are under acidic conditions here, it is most likely that the amine does the last deprotonation. But there's a lot of water around, so water could also do the deprotonation for you. But in the end, what we would get is our carbonyl compound. Sorry, these electrons are pushed to the oxygen. We get the carbonyl compound back, and plus we can write an ammonium ion. And since we are under acidic conditions, it is very likely that our amine exists as an ammonium ion instead of existing as a free amine because an amine is a, is a basic molecule, okay? So that is the overall mechanism of an amine hydrolysis that converts an amine back into the carbonyl compound and the amine. Uh, so uh, there's a mechanism, again, one thing I would like to point out with these mechanisms is since we are operating under acidic conditions, okay, this is under acidic conditions, we do not have any negative charges on any of the intermediates here. So we avoid the formation of negative charges or like strong bases on nucleophiles under these conditions. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Okay, I hope everyone finds that video helpful. Bye.